Jesus' name. Father Lord, we thank you once again. We exalt and honor your name. We thank you because of whom you are. We exalt you because of your name that is highly lifted up. Thank you for teaching us your word. Make known to the us your path. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we will welcome once again. We are teaching on the topic. Which says the conclusion of the bowls of rocks. So we will start from where we stopped last week, which is Revelation 16. So we are going to be looking at the vow. So if you want the writing of this teaching, the complete lesson, which we cannot display online for obvious reason, you can go to our website to read about it at cgfnslogin.app. To so give you the conclusion, we cannot teach everything here. But today we're going to use the opportunity to bring the best of this teaching to you. So from verse 17, it says, The seven angel pour out his vial upon the earth, and there came a great voice out of the temple in heaven, saying it is done. So the final chromatic bowl was poured upon the kingdom of the power of the earth which is the prince of the power of the air, which is the prince of this world, evil Lucifer. So we knew where the bowl was poured upon. And so therefore we understand what he said it was done. And there the voice and the thunder and the lightning, and there was a great earthquake, such as it was not since men were upon the earth. So great an earthquake and so mighty an earthquake. And what happened to this kind of earthquake? The earthquake struck the part of the city and the great city was divided into three equal parts. And the nation of the kingdom fell as a result of this trick. And the great Babylonian came in remembrance before God, and to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. So there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, and his stone was about talent is quite big, a stone. It's like a pumps of a small baseball. So, men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hell. Because the plague thereof was exceedingly great. So, it's literally what it's stated here. There is no allegorical interpretation to that. Hell is hell. And they fell. Verse chapter 17 from verse 1. There came out of this out of this there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vial and talked with me, saying, Come unto me, come hither, and I will show unto you the judgment of the great hall that sit upon many water. The judgment of the great hall that sits upon many water. Who is this hall that sits upon many water? And why was his judgment pumped out in the book of Revelation? We will try our best to go through the scripture to explain it to you bit by bit without going to congestions and general teachings. You will understand the mystery of this woman because John detail the characters of this woman in this very chapter. I will use the opportunity to explain the vivid nature of the character of this woman. We understand who this hall was that sit upon many waters and that made the earth drunk with the wine of her fornication. So who is this woman whom the kings of the earth has committed fornication and the inhabitant of the earth has made drop with the wine of her fornication? According to Revelation 17 verse 2. And this woman was clothed with an array of purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stone, pears, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abomination and the fadiness of her fornication. This is who she was. Therefore, 
And on her forehead, something significant was a name written. And this name was written Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and all abomination of the earth. The mother of harlots and all abomination of the earth. Throughout the scriptures, an idol was considered abomination unto the Lord. And beyond that, we have two types of fornication. When the Bible made halot, many reference to halot was made in the scripture. First, Jerusalem was called a halot. The Bible says, how has that my beloved city become a halot? And this is not only city that was referenced to as halot throughout the scripture. And how not as a city can a city be indulged in prostitution? No, that is not what is symbolized. The prostitution we are talking about is having carnal knowledge with an a strange or a foreign god is considered a form of prostitution throughout the scripture. So this is what the Bible is talking about here. Although the term halotry does not exclude physical prostitution, but it's also involved what we call spiritual prostitution or spiritual fornication. It's just like when Jesus told the apostles in the book of Matthew that behold, no man must put away his wife for any reason, except on the ground of fornication. He's not talking of adultery, but he's talking about spiritual fornication, idolatry. Idolatry. So this is exactly what this place is also referencing here, idolatry. But what kind of idolatry are we talking about in this modern age? People no longer have shrine in their house as it were in those days of the Roman Empire or the Babylonians. But this time, idolatry is of a different fashion. Remember the kind of idolatry was explained here. Having a carnal knowledge with the kings of the earth, dancing, converting a form of religion to the standard of the world and to the government of this age. So that the people of the world and the government of this way we are peace to you. So as a church or as a religious body, you are ready to dance to their tomb. It's a form of idolatry before God. Wherever they give you decision, even when you do not accept that decision and it's against your faith, you are ready to bend over backward to accept their doctrine as a way of life so that you can be accepted in the midst of them. This, to God, is a form of fornication. That is exactly what God was explaining here. Remember what he told the woman, he said, the woman before whom the king of the earth the kings of the earth, which is talking of the kings of this particular world, has committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth also. They bring any kind of things to her as a church, or as a body, or as a religious body, and she is ready to abide by everything they teach. She wants to serve God and the devil equally. And just as God told you, you cannot serve God and mammon. You are to choose one. You are either loyal to one and disloyal to the other. You either respect one and sin against the other. So therefore, you cannot serve God and the devil. You must choose one. But this woman, no, that was not her strategy. Her strategy is to worship the devil and God equally. And that is the reason why the Bible called her a harlot. So don't get that term wrong, don't be offended by it. It is not to say fornication per se, but it has to do with spiritual fornication, which is indulging in a false worship, worshiping the people rather than God Himself, which is blessed forever. So spiritual fornication today exists in various forms, even in the churches. When the church left the original doctrine of Christ, 
to practice that doctrine which God has not stated in the scriptures. Converting the biblical principle into a human principle is a form of fornication. Converting the doctrine of Christ into earthly doctrine just to please men and become men pleaser rather than being a worshiper of God is a form of fornication which is an idolatry before God. And so therefore, God wants us as Christians to hold on to his script, his teaching. But many Christians has happened over the century. The people of God have been denied. Christians have actively participated in the denials of many of God's principles. It is not a fallacy, but these are truths that are worth testation. And many churches have come in the name of Christ. They have grafted the idolatries of the earth into their religious doctrine just to make sure that they are acceptable to a set of people or a particular domain. This also is considered as fornication before God. God does not accept idol worship under any standard. Remember what he wants us about in, his, in the book of Exodus. He wants us that we should not make any graven image unto him in likeness of anything on earth or in heaven or under the earth. Making such a graven image in the name of God, God considers it as an abomination to his name. And so as a Christian, you must not make unto your God any form of graven image. It can be in likeness of things in heaven. It can be in likeness of things in the earth. It can be in likeness of things inside the ocean. But you must not make unto your God any form of graven image. So when Christians begin to make, take some object of worship, change Christians' cultures into adult cultures, this is a form of idolatry. When the teachings of Christ and the practice, remember what Christ said to the Pharisees, every tree that my father has not planted shall be uprooted out. So any tree that God has not planted, that you try to plant in the church of God, is a form of idolatry. God even go to far extent when he was warning the children of Israel, telling them when they want to make unto him an altar, that if an ass should not be raised against a stone. That any stone that you raise us against to make his altar becomes an idol. So God will not tolerate such stone to be put as an altar unto him. So clear was the law that the children of Israel consider stones that you carve out from rock as an idol. So therefore they will not use it in building the altar of sacrifice unto the Lord. So Jews today should not do the same. You must not use any form of image or controversial object in worshipping God. Throughout the years, the martyrs were slaughtered for the sake of this teaching. Because they considered taking any form of image into the church as the worst set of abomination imaginable. And as a result, many of them were crucified. Even by the teaching that Christ was killed by Patinius Pilate, the Romans, as stated in the Apostolic Creed, they re rejected it in the early church. Because that was not what the book of Corinthians teaches us. That how Christ died for our sin according to the scriptures. And he rose again the third day according to the scripture. This was the teachings of the church. But to deny such teaching. God see it as an offense against him. Because you are not only teaching doctrine that are strange to the ears of God, but God also considers such doctrine false. So that's why he made it clear to us that as Christians, we should stand between the boundary that is set for us. But failing to stand between this, this particular boundary, you may not literally, literally go to commit fornication or sin to be considered a harlot before God. Remember, this woman here was not called the only fornicator. She was only called the mother of it. Because there are other small, small fornicators. But she was the mother of idol worship. 
in the sense that she introduced idol verbally to every single thing she possessed. So we knew, based on this teaching, God will not have time to ask the book of Revelation to point at a Gentile nation who has no linking to his background of faith or to the teaching of Jesus Christ as an idol worshiper. No. But God would, however, do the same to a church. Remember in the beginning of the book of Revelation, God points out to the church that he make it clearer to us that the church of God should be chaste virgin unto Christ. The church of God should be chaste virgin unto Christ. Does it really symbolize physical virginity to Christ? No. What he's talking about is our purity. Because the Bible makes us understand that Christ is coming for a bride without spots or any such thing. So Christ is coming for a church without spots. But this woman was not called a virgin of Christ, but rather she was called a harlot. Because she has stained all her wedding garments with all the lusts and various unclean things that make up the earth. And as a result, makes her unfit for the kingdom of God. But why did Paul, why did John marvel when she was shown this woman? If John was shown the Roman Empire killing Christians, he would not marvel. Because why? The Roman Empire then was the enemy of the church. They persecuted Christians in the early church. But this is John being shown a Christian church in actively involved in the persecution of Christians. So John would marvel, say, how can this ever be? That the people that are claiming to preach Christ or become the vicars of Christ are not the one killing Christians. And John was surprised. That's why he said I marvel in admiration. I marvel. That's why the angel asked, why did you marvel? Because it sounds too odd to be true for him that a Christian church can actively involve in the persecution of Christians. So, in the book of Acts, chapter 15, from verse 1 to 4, let's read. Sorry, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 4. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless your belief is in vain. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. And he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture. And that he was seen of Cephas and of the twelve. And that he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once. Of whom the greater part remain to that present day that Paul was speaking about. But some have fallen asleep because at that point Stephen was dead and the, most of the apostles were also killed. John, the brother of James, was killed with Saul. So when Paul was speaking, some of those brethren that saw Jesus alive were still alive. But the rest, some were killed. And Paul said, at last of all, he was seen of men. Because Paul was not a convert of Christ when Christ was alive. In fact, he never knew Jesus Christ. He was of Tarsus. And Paul said something strange here that many Christians ignore. He was seen of me, one born in the time. Paul said Jesus was seen by him after his resurrection. So if this alone would disprove all the argument about the resurrection of Christ, if he was not risen from the dead, how did Paul see him? Paul said he saw him in due time. For I was the least of the apostles. Because 
that I was not meant to be called an apostle because why I persecute the church. He persecuted the church, but yet Christ showed himself to him. Now, let's go back to our teaching in the book of Revelation 17. Now you just get it. Before we go there, Romans 1 verse 16 also make it clear that Christ died for our sin according to the scripture. Let's read Romans 1 verse 16 before we come back to our verse. Romans 1 verse 16 said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. And wherefore, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. How shall the just live? By faith. Have to two now. The just shall live by faith. So we understand this. Even to today. That's part that many Christians have stoned their head on the faith of Christ. These teachings were biblicals. They were attested for and they were true. So when we talk about the mother of heart, the mother of Harlot must be the mother church because they were the first. But that makes them the mother of the rest church because the theologies and the relevance of the entire churches on earth was derived from the mother church. That, if that the mother church is the mother of Harlot, that makes the smaller congregational church the smaller Harlot. So that is what Christ was saying to them. They thought they could be better. In Smyrna, the devil did everything to crush the Christian church. He persecuted them for 12 reign of kings. The last, for 10 good reign of kings, I mean, the last one was the Christian, which was the worst of the bunch. The one that God Paul beheaded. And this that God John also exiled to Patmos. He was the last. But for that 12 reign of king, they were persecuted. The church never submit right down to the world. They never take part in the feast of the world or in the pagan sacrifice of the worship of the moon, the sun, and the God of the land. But something strange happened in Pagamos. In Pagamos, what the devil could not have fought to accomplish in Smyrna when he crushed them like man, he accomplished in Pagamos. He got wedded to the world. This is the height of idolatry. Wedding the Christian church with the unbelieving world. Wedding the people of God with Satan. And that was what leads to the downfall of churches. Today, Christians lost their value before the earth. Because the Bible says, if the salt has lost its saltness, where wheat can it be sorted? It is good for nothing than to be chosen under feet by men. Today, a lot of Christians have lost their saltness. And they cannot be sorted because they just become one with the people they are supposed to save. When the church and Christians come together with a declaration to inform them that the Christians and the church, they should sign the same letter together as an agreement. These two churches, they went into this agreement. And the moment that agreement was signed, they marked the damp clothing of the entire church. That brought the beginning of the end for the Christian church. So, the Pentecostals should not separate themselves, nor the Anglican, nor the Protestants. When we talk about this, the entire congregational church is split. How does congregationalism be introduced into the church that you now have one man as the head of God's house? If God wanted one man to be the head of his house, he would have started it with the apostolic. In the apostolic church, one man was never the head. 
Some people claim the authority from Peter. Jesus said to Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. No. Peter was never the general of a shower of God's house. Neither did he claim so throughout his writing. Nor John, the beloved. Nor James, the brother of John. No one ever claimed leadership over the household of God. But they had that. They knew where leadership and the sole authority of the church came from. The devil. What does the devil do? He said that we are sent to hell in the book of Isaiah. And I will sit upon the mount of congregation. And I will be like the most high. I shall be crowned with glory and majesty. On the side of the north. We know who that is. That is Lucifer himself. He is the only one that wants to rule over God's house. God does not choose us. In fact, Jesus himself said by himself that anyone that wants to be the head among us, let him be the servant of all. But by the time you want people to serve you, not to be served, you are no longer leading the house of God. You are just becoming one with the devil. So what happened when the body of Christ and the body of sin are now make united? That means you have come to Padanus when you get married to the world. The church now becomes a state religion. Because the Christian thought by making the church a state religion would be a good thing. Because they will escape persecution. The church will no longer be persecuted. But one thing they fail to understand, the devil does not work anything that it does not benefit. If the day you give freedom to sin, that day you destroy righteousness. That is how it works. Oh, but we just did it so that people will have freedom to worship. But that same day you just give the devil a foothold in the house of God. And as a result, the church became compromised. Because now when they are listing state religions, the church will be added as one of them. Which unfortunately the church of Christ has no name. And neither does, was it ever a state religion. Because Christ himself was not accepted by the state. Even when the disciple wanted to fight to claim dominance, he told the disciple that his kingdom was not of this world. So a kingdom that is not of this world, how does it automatically become a state religion? Have you ever asked yourself that question? If the church was accepted as a state religion, why were the apostles crucified by the same state? Why was they beheaded? Why was Peter hung outside them? If the church of God was made to participate in politics, why did Jesus die? Remember three times they tried to take him to make him king. He slipped away and ran away from them. He didn't want to become the king of the world. But now when the church now become one with the government of this world, we have a problem. And that is the problem this place is to look into. When he make it clearer here in this verse 17, let's go to Revelation 17 and read it. Revelation 17. It said in verse 6, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints. The blood of the saints. How can? How possible? The blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. This woman in question, this mystery Babylon, somehow is responsible for the persecution of all Christians and all the saints that have been killed in history. And is also responsible for the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. This same woman. Who is she? The Bible can easily tell us who she is. Because thank God we have the Bible in front of us. We know who. How Jesus died on the cross. And we know who was responsible. Remember the Jews. When they came to Pilate. Saying crucify Jesus Christ for us. Pilate said you have the law. Take him. Go and judge him according to your law. But what did they say to, to Pilate? 
we are not allowed to put anyone to death. They have already prejudged him that his offense, according to them, is worthy of death. So they are bringing him deliberately to Pilate to be crucified. And who was Pilate? He was a Roman prostitute. So we knew who this woman is, even from that particular place. Now that we, are, we have unraveled that this woman was the ancient role and the future role in the but how does it come in contact with the church? Where does the church come as an integral part of Rome? <laughs> we will come to that. And this woman was drunk with the blood of the saints. 95% of the Christians killed in history were not killed by the emperors of the unbelieving Rome. They were killed by the Christian Rome. And one leaders of this Christian Rome killed more Christians than all the Emperor Nero and Augustus and every one of them put together killed throughout their lifetime. And today, Christians are still being persecuted by fellow Christians. And therefore, when we talk about being drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the matter of Jesus, and when I saw, I wonder with a great admiration. This is John speaking. I wondered, how can this be possible? A church, we are not talking of the evil room, which were the enemy, who was reported in posting me even to Pagamos. Are you telling me that a church can be worse than these people? That was why John wonders with great admiration. And the angel said to me, Wherefore did thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carry her, which had seven heads and ten horns. We know the symbol of seven heads and ten horns. We know where it came from, right from the book of Daniel. And we know what the ten horns are. There are ten kings that will rise one hour with the Antichrist, who have not yet received kingdom for now. But they will receive kingdom the same hour with the beast. We know who the seven heads are. Out of the seven heads, the Bible said, at the time of Daniel, two has fallen already, which are the Egyptian and the Assyrian has fallen. And we know that three was in the days of Janet, which is Nebuchadnezzar. And we know that the Grecian came, the uh, Parmenides and the Parsia came. Then the Grecian came, and after the Grecian came what? The Roman Empire, which existed to today. But this is exactly the image, that the beast that carried this woman, as we can explain perfectly well. Now, what happened? Which the beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall say that of the bottomless pit. We know who that was. Lucifer, that means the whole earth leaders and the governors of the super kingdom were controlled and got their authority from the devil, not from God. So only the devil want to rule over all the earth, not God. So when people are desirous to be the superpower, it is, they don't get the authority from God. And they, are, they can be quite ambitious, so don't stand on their way. They are ready to crush anything that stands on their way. So they are not getting authority from God, but they are getting authority from the devil. So that is exactly what happened. No ambitious man gets his authority from God. The beast that thou sawest is not, and shall say that of the bottleless spirits, and goes into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the books of life from the foundation of the world. And they beheld the beast that was and is not, and yet is. 
the beast that was and was not and yet is. Who is this beast? Let's go step by step. He was and is not and yet is. Who is this? He has sent out to the bottomless pit and he goes into perdition. The devil. He does not exist today because he has the thrown into the bottomless pit. And at the end of the world, he will rise up on the bottomless pit. He will rule for a certain time, then he will go into perdition. Then, the, there is the mind that had wisdom. Whenever the Bible uses this word, a strong Indian, an enigma, is about to come true. The word, the mind that had wisdom. The seven head and seven mountain on which the woman seated. The city upon seven hills. And we know that what that is. And there are seven kings, and seven are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And we know seven kings in the Bible who they were. Egyptian fell, the Assyrian fell. And in the days of, of John, three has already fallen. The Babylonian was gone, the Assyrian has gone, the Egyptian is gone, and uh, the Medes is gone, the Grecian is gone. We have this ceased at the time John was writing. That's why he said the be seven king. Five were fallen, and five has fallen by the time John was writing. And one is, and the one that was, that sentenced John to Patmos, the Roman, the was. And the other part of the eastern leg of the Roman Empire was not yet come. And when he shall come, he must continue for a short space. But the beast that was and is not, even he is what? He ate. And he is, he ate. He, he may be coming out from the seven, he is not part of the seven. He is an empire of his own. He's not coming. He might be springing from the ancient Rome, but he's not part of the Roman Empire. But he is the eight. But the Bible referred to him as the Assyrian Empire. You see, when the Assyrian shall come into my land, then will I raise upon him seven princes and seven principal men, and they shall destroy the Assyrian of my land. The Bible called him an Assyrian. So, he is the eighth, but he comes out of the seven. He is coming out of the ancient Roman, the revived Roman Empire, but he is of the eighth of the empire, but he will go into what? Perdition. The ten more without soils are ten kings, and these ten kings have not received any kingdom, so we will not speculate. Because we don't know who this ten king are, because they have not received any kingdom for now. But we receive power as king. The same spot stamp with the beast, the Antichrist. And these have one mind. They will give all their strength to the beast. And they shall make war with the lamb. And the lamb will overcome them. <laughs> For he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And they that are with him are called choosing and faithful. So, the reason that they cannot make war with him is that because the Lord is the King of Kings and he will overcome them. And because he is the Lord of Lords. And anybody that is with him, the 144,000 are called choosing and faithful. So that you cannot overcome them with sin. Because they have lived in the earth. No sin was found in their hands. They were virgin before the throne of God. And no evil or guilt was found in them. There is no form of sin that can be recorded against these ones. And because no sin can be recorded against them, you cannot overcome them. And therefore, 
the ten the ten horns which thou sawest in the head of the beast are ten kingdom. This ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, they shall hate this great harlot. Why did they hate this harlot? Who seated upon many waters. This ten horns, which are the ten king, they will hate the whole. And they shall make her desolate and what? Naked. And shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. The destruction of this church, the congregational church, will be led by this thinking in the period of the Antichrist. And they will hate her. If they hate the mother of Halot, what do you think they will do to the Halot himself? They will hate them also. Not only will they hate the mother church, but they will hate the churches as well. And they will persecute the church. So let's be specific of who this identity of this Halot is. The Halot you see is the mother churches. And the Halot itself, the mother of it, is the mother church. But when we talk about the smaller Halot, are the rest congregational church or the earth dwellers who will miss the righteous. But they have the form of godliness, they deny the power thereof. So these are not the saints. The saints must have been taken from the earth in this period. So the saints are not present. So don't mistake it for Christians. No, these are not Christians. They have a form of godliness. They go to church. They are church attenders. They are church goers. But they deny the power that comes with serving God. So as a result of that, they cannot be termed Christians. Because Christians are the follower of Christ who believe in the resurrected Christ and they live according to his purpose. So, let's go further. Before we round, round up, I just want us to round up at the point where by next week we can continue. The ten horn which thou sawest upon the beast, they shall hate the whore, and they shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. This word is very irritating. Eat her flesh, burn her with fire. It's not really talking about cannibalism anyway. But what we're talking about here is divorce everything that has to do with her because of her foolishness. And they will, though she compromise, but they will not welcome her compromise into their organization. Today, the church has compromised a lot of standards a lot of behavior, a lot of quality, just to be accepted in the world. Ask yourself one simple question. Did the world accept them? No. The world never accepted the church. Despite the compromise of the church, the church will still not be accepted by the world. So they will make the church desolate and naked, and they will burn them with fire. Despite their surrender to the world, but they will never be accepted. Because you cannot be part of his kingdom. You cannot serve two masters. You have to choose one. The world needs you to surrender. So you either surrender totally to them as a Christian, or you are not part of them. So you can never give them half surrender. If you say, well, let's just allow this little sin, the devil will take a man. And that little sin will become your death. And that is exactly what he did to this woman. She compromised her Christian conduct. To the extent she was successfully dominant in riding the beast. Comfortable as a false prophet. Sitting upon the beast and riding the beast dominion with laughter and joy. She is not the antichrist. She is the false prophet. Because her job 
is not to replace Christ. Her job is to counterfeit Christ. She is a false prophet. And that is who she is. And this false prophet, what was his job? To make the inhabitant of the earth to accept the Antichrist. She is going to be the introducer general of the Antichrist to present to the world and the entire human race that the Antichrist is the true Christ which they should follow. That is her job. And this woman who you saw is a great city. It's a great city. For obvious reason, I will not mention the city. But the woman who you saw is a great city. And this city In verse 17, let's read 17, 17. John had put their heart, God has put in their heart to fulfill his will, to agree and give their kingdom to the beast, until the word of God be fulfilled. The purpose why they will hand over their kingdom to the Antichrist is not because of their weakness, it's because God has put it in their heart to fulfill these things. The woman which you saw is a great city, which reigned over the kings of the earth. This woman, she is not a single entity, but she is what? A city. The whole you saw in the book of Revelation, don't let people claim it to you to be an individual. It's not. It's a great city. And this city rules over the kings of the earth. But ask yourself one question. Can a city be a harlot? Man, one single person can be tense to commit fornication, but the whole city, fornication, that to tell you, God is not talking about physical fornication here. He's talking about idolatry. But the whole city can worship an idol. They can make an idol for themselves. It can be the idol of materiality or whatever format, though the Bible does not specify it. So God here make it clearer to us that this city, this woman is a city, is not a person. And after these things, I saw another angel coming down with a great power from heaven. And the earth was lighting with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is falling and is falling and it's become the inhabitation of devil and the hold of every full spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bed. God is speaking about this city who has become the inhabitation of devils and it has become the, uh, a place where all hateful demons are being put in cage. So this city exists and we know they do. In 18 verse 3, all nations were drawn from the wine of the wrath of our fornication. All nations suffer as a result of this woman. From the slaves trade in Africa down to all the ornament and the persecution of the martyrs in the early church, they suffer as a result of this city. And the kings of the earth has committed fornication with her. Somehow this king find a way to make her diplomacy effort to reach every nation, whether Christian, Muslim, Buddha, or whatever. They all respect her because she's ready to worship everything and to compromise to every standard just to be accepted into their culture. And the merchants of the earth became rich because of their trade with this woman and the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partaker of her sin, that ye receive not from her plagues. God is warning you today, come out of these evil generational churches. 
come out from this church of God that claim to be Christians, but they deny God by their service. The Bible says they hold a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not your clean thing, and the Lord will accept you. And you will be a son and a daughter unto the Lord. Brethren, this is where we will stop this teaching for today. Watch next week for the part two of the woman who ride the beast. And we will show you the woman who ride the beast, who dominate the beast political system, and who control the structures of the earth. So we will not name names, not call any particular do domination, denomination, but we will expose the entire prophecy to you in truth. God bless you as you have listened to today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word that has come forth. We thank you for your understanding. Thank you because you told me that the entrance of your word bringeth light and your insights understanding. Father, Lord, give understanding to the simple-minded people today. Teach us that way. Make known to all that path. Show us the secret things. Because the Bible told me secret thing belongs to God. But the thing that I revealed belongs to us. Show us that way, O oh Lord. Let us not be ashamed. Don't let your en our enemies triumph over us. Father, bless as many that have hearkened unto your word and return. As many that will take this word to save life. Lord, let them be rewarded in this world. And in the world to come, let them have eternal life. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, it is where we come to the conclusion of today. If you miss any part of this teaching, join our teaching in CGF Open Heart Fellowship. CGF Open Heart Fellowship. On your Facebook page or check our website at cgfnslogin.com. cgfnslogin.com. God bless you as you participate in Jesus' name. Amen. For as many that are sick and decree healing, as many that are sitting in darkness, I say, let the light of God shine upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Chicken. Chicken nuggets.